Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 43. 43. The Naked Man. <laughs> How I afraid he? You had to say The Naked Man. <laughs> Go back to the Dan Rizanowski episode and you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll probably link that for you too. Right. Anyway, obviously we are in interview format and we have Mark Smith, ex San Jose Shark, and now doing some broadcasting with Dan Rizanowski. Uh He is on the show. He will be answering uh, all of our questions, hopefully, and maybe giving us a little bit of a story time. Yep. Very good. Okay, so you ready to start the show? Ready. Well, I think this episode's going to be pretty smitty. <laughs> yeah! So Mark, Mark got it. You didn't catch the reference. No, no? sorry. Okay, well, that's okay. Uh, if you don't know, uh, then I'm not going to bother explaining it to you. But anyway, we've <laughs> got, again, Mark Smith on the show. Mark, uh, again, thank you so much oh, yeah, for, thank for being you. here. No, thank really you, guys. Do appreciate, yeah, appreciate, uh, yeah. appreciate having an ex-player on, on the, the set here. It's oh, great. Well, it's you nice, know? nice to have me. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having me. The that's first nice, former nice Sharks player. That's believe. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So the only, we, the only place now is to go up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So the 1997 draft. 1997 draft, same as Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, and Scott Hannon. Good company. You, yeah, it was a real good crop in there. Yeah. yeah. You really were good. 100, no, 219th <laughs> overall. But I think what's a really cool stat is the games game play, games played that you had in the NHL. That put you in that draft class uh, was 32nd for games played. Oh, yeah. Which is amazing for That's how late bad. you drafted. Yeah. yeah. So uh, congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. no, that was... Uh, Pretty cool, yeah. I can. My first year, I, I came into camp here with Scott Hannon. Uh, mm -hmm. He was my roommate for the first time I came to town, which was, was pretty cool. And actually, I got a good, good story about that. Sure. Actually, if yeah. you guys want to hear that, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I wheeled in. We were staying at the Hilton at that time, so I wheeled in the hotel and uh, checked in. And I looked. I'm like, you know, who's my roommate? You know, and then checked out. I'm like, it's Scott Hannon. I'm like, he played in the West, right? And I'm mm -hmm. like, he's probably a good guy. You nice. know, it's like I never met him before. So I came up to the room and I, I came in and I introduced myself. Hi, you know, Mark Smith, you know, it's, oh, cool, you know, it's, come on in. So we're sitting there and I, for some reason I opened a drawer and I, I don't know why, because I never opened drawers in a hotel, but I, he had all his clothes folded out in the, in the things, you know, uh -huh. his bags unpacked and I turn around, I'm like, what do you think you're going to be here for a while? <laughs> and then, oh, he cracked up and had a good laugh about it. But uh, yeah, ever since then, we've we been pretty good pals. So. Nice. Uh, it's a pretty funny story, actually. It's, yeah, I remember that. But. That's cool. You guys are both still around in the area. Yeah. So yeah, he's uh, he's married here. He's got kids as well. Nice. Uh, I got a couple kids of my own. Um, so yeah, we try to get them to, together. And, uh, you know, we do both do a little coaching now and stuff, too. So it's pretty cool. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. So I want to I want to jump to that that five on three because I'm going to go straight to it right because it was it, it was an article 25 years at San Jose Sharks at SAP right yeah and they had some of the loudest moments in Sharks history and that moment the five on three was the second loudest moment ever yeah so um, I don't know if there's anything else, like you can maybe tell us a little bit about that maybe some of the emotions as you realize your stick's broken you got another guy's <laughs> stick bro broken well, you know it's like yeah, yeah funny we were talking about Hannon was out on yeah. the ice yeah. and, and his stick was actually the other guy I think he broke his right off the face off and then because back in that day you could like two hand guys especially when yeah, you're killing yeah. five on three and then like 30 seconds in, someone had a chance, and I two-handed him, and my stick <laughs> broke, right? So now we're out there with no sticks, and, and after that, I mean, we really didn't do too much, because we were like, we're just kind of stayed in the middle, yeah. and, and Vesa Toskla was actually in net, yeah. and and he was just making like these unbelievable saves, and they're passing back, one-timers back, so like top of the circles, just like ripping them off of Vesa. And, and I remember saying to myself, like, it is so loud in here. <laughs> and, you know, like, it was a, and I even, because like, you don't really notice that when you're out there, but yeah. I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, this is amazing. It was so loud. <laughs> and it was, that's the loudest that I'd ever heard it. So uh, it was pretty cool. That's why I kind of my claim to fame, I guess, as, <laughs> as a shark. Everyone always asked me about that. Yeah. But uh, it was such a classic moment. And I mean, I, I, I watched it again. It was like a minute 45 or something. Like they were, yeah. they just had his hand in and then Hannon jumped down and, and cleared it out with his hand. But uh, the kicker with that one was it was so loud. We came off. And the Oilers, they came right back down, and, they, and then they scored right, right after that, <laughs> which was like it was so deflating. I think that was that was a 
the key to that series actually that was so deflating that <laughs> that goal but it, it for a minute it, it was real loud in there so yeah. it was crazy it was a great I, great moment i remember that game i was there at that yeah. game oh, that was uh, awesome. i had season tickets with marshall who was on the show one time yeah. um and we said it then like that's i was like that's the loudest i've heard it and yeah. i was there for the playoff games against belfour when we chanted belfour right. after we scored yeah. on him and all that but that was definitely the loudest and, and yeah. stuck in my mind is mm -hmm. still the loudest yeah. like yeah. i've never heard that place louder it was great <laughs> yeah it was great yeah it was, it was pretty pretty cool spot uh the, the piece of history right. you know, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you will to to be a part of so but uh no fun times definitely definitely good <laughs> memories yeah. nice no doubt yeah uh, I don't want to you bring it up. I don't right, want to bring this all up. Right. <laughs> so another story. Okay, the, cool. This will be the first story, or the story when I first met Mark Smith, which I told before on the show episode. I don't know, two or three. Time. We'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but I was in, this was in 2005, so that same year we're talking about with the 5-on-3. Yeah. Um, I was at Mountain Charlie's, and one of my best friends who's in the picture was the cocktail waitress, and she would get me in. <laughs> for free on, right. on the list, whatever. <laughs> and then I had another friend that was a bartender, so I would pay like next to nothing living for a life. tab. Oh, I was living large at, yeah, what, right. at 22, 23. Yeah. And um, towards the end of the night, I'm, I'm sitting there and, and all of a sudden I see you walk in with, I think it was it was Nico Dimitrakos and I think it was... Uh, Josh Hennessy? Josh Hennessy or, I think it was Josh Hennessy, maybe not, hmm. but... Um, Anyway, I was like, I, was, I look around and nobody recognized you guys. I'm like, I'm a huge Sharks fan. I'm like, nobody knows who just walked into the bar right yeah, now. This is great. incredible. Yeah. So I go up to you and I'm like, you know, I had liquid courage. I'm like, Mark, what's up? How's it going? And you're like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, hey, can I buy you a beer? And you're like, beer? No, we're going to have tequila. And I was like, oh, all right. So that night just turned. So my, my friend had a camera with her because this is before yeah. cell phone cameras oh yeah that's so, right yeah that's so right. we had an we actual got camera that's unbelievable and so there's a picture yeah. Oh, that's, and that's here it comes awesome. yeah. let me pull it out you, you guys have seen this picture already and I showed Mark I'm not sure if I remember this picture this Aaron is, got it oh that okay. is awesome so we're gonna get <laughs> that is it's, it's okay I'm gonna have you sign it and oh, we'll put yeah. it up on the and we'll put it up on the set for the rest of the season we looked like we had a there couple tequilas right there that's fantastic it was a great night so this is this is my like claim to fame of yeah the Sharks play this is great. That's great. Can so, I say that real quick? Actually, I mean, yeah, the, you've got the the bleach tips going on, but I, can I just draw attention to Aaron real quick? Yeah, like, <laughs> I had hair. Yeah, 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 yeah a little yeah, bit yeah. of hair up yeah. there, on top of it. Wow. Okay. Like anyway, it. that was long for back yeah. then for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Good times. Throwback oh, Thursday. Goodness. Yeah. Okay. So you you have a drink with Aaron, then you decide I'm done with this. I'm retiring. Right. So well, that was a nice thing. That's, that was kind of the nice thing about San Jose is like you could go out and yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and no one would really recognize you know. Now with the phones and social media, yeah. and, you know, these guys are getting yeah, noticed everywhere. So, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. we kind of got away with a little bit back when we played, and uh, it was definitely a different different league yeah. at that time. Yeah, but I never went out anyone when I played. I was always <laughs> at home working on my riffs. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. Um, when you ended uh, your playing career, you were actually in with with Calgary, but you came back to San Jose. So we had this as a, a segment once on our show before where mm -hmm. we were talking about other players and retiring in San Jose and why they like staying in San Jose and obviously a, part, a big part of it being the weather and whatnot. Right. But um, so what, what made you want to stay in San Jose or in, in California? Because obviously- Well, you're... truth be told, I, I was here. I, I owned my house when I came back from Calgary and, and uh, my daughter was just born. So my wife and I were kind of just deciding you know what to do. Uh, we ended up opening a store here, uh, uh, Isla Clothing, A Y L A, and, and my wife still uh, has online store and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we ended up opening a store here uh, for to sell clothes and stuff and, and jewelry, and uh, we ended up actually deciding to move to. Uh, we were actually going to go to Brazil. Uh, we made it to Cabo. <laughs> as far as you guys. My yeah. sister had lived yeah. there. So we went down there and visited her, and, and we actually just liked it there. And I was I was kind of coming back. I was kind of working on what I was going to do with my next uh, next career. Because mm -hmm. I, was, I was still in shock a little bit, you know, as my, as my career over. Because I ended up getting hurt at the end of that mm -hmm. season pretty bad. And, and I couldn't play the next year. And, you know, I was like kind of still, I don't know. But... Um, Went to Cabo for a couple of years uh, and decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to start uh, learning how to program and uh, 
you know, I'm going to do this for my next career. And and so Cobble was a good spot to do that. I had a nice <laughs> view of the arch nice. and it was, uh, yeah. you know, I could go down to the ocean and, and hang out all the yeah. time. And so I had some a good years there and, and it was, um, it was good for my kids, both learning Spanish and stuff. My wife is from Peru, so mm, nice. uh, Sp- that was important for us. And, and they got uh, good, but there was no ice down there, right? Yeah. <laughs> no ice down in Cabo. So um, ended up making the trek back here about four or five years ago, about four years ago now, I guess. And uh, and got a job up in San Francisco. So I worked for a company called Pager Duty. Nice. Uh, yeah, we're digital operations management. We have like software platform that, right? We have a, a pretty good, uh, good little product. So uh, exciting to be part of that now mm-hmm. and, and, and working as a developer for that company and, and now getting back in with the Sharks, which is, which is cool yeah. and, and coaching. My kids now both play hockey up in the city. And, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's kind of come, come full circle. But of course, I love my years here in San Jose. I made some great friends. So it was always kind of my intention mm-hmm. to come back here or you know, at least keep it out open for an option. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, when you leave the Bay Area and try to come back, it's, it's tough. It's it not is easy. tough, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, even from the, the five years I was gone, how the prices have, have already risen. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we we all survive somehow, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. Uh, but I love being here in the in the, in the the Bay and get to go to hockey and be a part of the Sharks a uh, little bit organization doing, you know, alumni stuff that, mm-hmm. that we're kind of getting going yeah. in as well. So Such an or- yeah. unorthodox path for uh, like a, an ex-professional athlete to take to go into, you know, coding and whatnot. I think you might have given me a little hint as to how that you got that that path down. So how did you get into that? I was, I was always kind of interested when I kind of went to, when I was younger in school. Yeah. Uh, our school, though, I think from K to 12, we only had one Apple computer. I was like, you know, the old floppy one, you know. Yeah. So, I, and and I was always kind of into it and, and stuff. There, I was my my thing was like, they were supposed to make like a circle and stuff, and then I ended up making like the Edmonton Oilers logo. And I was like, <laughs> I think I made a Sharks logo. I'm nice. gonna make all these things animate. And then yeah. my teacher was even like, I don't even know how you're doing. That. You know, I was like, so I knew I was pretty good at, at a younger age, and and it was interesting to me, but. Uh, I kind of got away from it for, with hockey and uh, right. you know music and stuff. But after hockey, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna need something to do here for the rest of my life." <laughs> uh, you know, I was like 30 years old, and and I kind of looked at music, and I kind of looked at at <laughs> a real job, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, you know, I'm gonna maybe." Try to go this way. Yeah, and, that's a good uh, area to especially, do it, in, yeah. especially in San Jose, right? Or, or Silicon in Valley area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but I, I I'm a passionate about it. You know, I love to do it, and mm-hmm. and uh, and um, so yeah, we're here. We are <laughs> here. We are. And so you mentioned Edmonton. You're from. Edmonton. Right? I, I was born in Edmonton, but it's it's not really fair to say I'm from Edmonton. Okay. I, I grew up in Saskatchewan. Okay. I'm from Eyebrow, Saskatchewan, little farm town. Uh, Eyebrow? Eyebrow, Saskatchewan. Wow. <laughs> it's a thriving metropolis of about 150, and wow. I'm probably going to get in trouble from someone from uh, Eyebrow for uh-oh. saying 100. It's 172. They don't have like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't have a yeah, big yeah. sign of you, home yeah. of Mark Smith. They did, did at they? one point, yeah. yeah. And, and then we, or my family kind of moved away and stuff, so... I think it got vandalized, so they had oh. a, <laughs> probably someone like this guy Smith. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, uh, obviously it's it's hard to kind of get back there and stuff with family yeah. and stuff. But I try to. I th- I'm going back actually to Saskatchewan this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually being inducted into the SJHL SJHL Hall of Fame. Nice. So yeah, congratulations. So I'm. Um, uh, it's going to be in Nipawin, yeah. uh, Nipawin. Saskatchewan uh, this summer, I think August second or something like that. So, wow. so it's pretty cool. I'm gonna yeah, go back congrats. and see. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you. There's uh, some coaches that are going in. Uh, one of my good buddies, Greg Clausen, he played in Nashville uh, for a little bit. Okay, uh, they're gonna induct him, and then actually Rajon Stranger, who is also with the Sharks or- organization. Wow. You guys, that, yeah. that name might yeah. might ring uh, a bell. Not, yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. So with a uh, name like that, I think if I heard it, I would right. I would yeah. know, but yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So it's it's exciting yeah. and, and I'm looking forward to it. So I'm gonna take my whole family back up there. And Very cool. Luckily, uh, there won't be ten feet of snow on the ground. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're also doing uh, the Little Sharks program. And actually, my my son Jace was uh, ha- actually had Mark. As, oh, that's as awesome. Your, your yeah. coach there, as right. the coach there. I hope um, I didn't yell at him too bad. No, <laughs> no, no. He he loved having yeah. you, and he loves. Well, Scott was doing it too. Mm-hmm. So he was uh, actually I have a picture of him sitting down with with Coach Scott. You know, because nice. I guess uh, he was. 
he tripped and fell and he was upset about something and then Scott Hannon's like leaning ne- next to him and like, it's hilarious <laughs> so anyway yeah he, he really enjoyed the program so awesome. awesome do you think that's something that maybe you'd want to uh, expand on maybe like yeah, I know you're teaching oh, or oh, not, yeah. you're coaching your kids right now I am I'm, I'm, I coach full like I coach in two teams as well in San Francisco this year I probably mm-hmm. dial that back next year but uh, this Little Sharks program is great and uh, they run it twice a year spring and fall and they've got us doing like um, three separate sessions every mm-hmm. Sunday for six weeks, right? So, I mean, it's quite a bit. I, I'm going to like different rinks around yeah. the Bay. I go to Fremont, Tri-Valley, and Oakland, mm-hmm. and San Francisco's in it. Hanner does the one down here at, at Little Sharks, mm-hmm. uh, at Sharks Ice here. And then uh, Tommy Peterson is also involved, okay. and he, we do Redwood City and nice. Santa Clara. So unbelievable programs 150 bucks for all the gear you get to yeah. keep, these kids get to keep the gear oh, cool. when they're done and it's such a great introduction to hockey yeah. a lot of these kids you know haven't skated before they got their pants on yeah. backwards and you know <laughs> it's like but it's it's crazy they get out there and and a lot of these kids can't even skate and then by the the sixth week you know they're ripping around yeah. so they they pick it up fast and it's uh it's really a a nice grassroots program that they're putting together that the, and the NHL is doing this all over the, the mm-hmm. country. Yeah. What's the age group for that? Uh, it's like four to eight. Okay. Four to eight, I think, is is what they uh, allow. No, my kid's two yeah. and a half. I, I yeah, 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 it's, but, yeah. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be just like if your kid has never like never participated played, yeah, or right? played before, yeah. essentially. Yeah, so. It actually worked great. I put my kids in it when I came back because they were, my daughter was seven, I think, at that time, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and my, my son was five and I'm like, oh, yeah, really, a hundred bucks for gear. I'm like, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. So I put him in. And I like, coached him, right? Because yeah. I was. Wait, he I was said a like, hundred bucks for gear. Like, yeah, it, was then, like, it was like, like okay. it was like hundred twenty-five. Back then, it was one twenty-five. <laughs> it was one twenty-five, and uh, I think it, it's went up a little bit. Gotcha. I'm gonna have to cut that out. Yeah. Cut that out. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it was a great program, and and uh, at least I didn't even know if they'd like hockey. You know, yeah. and I'm I'm not really one to to pressure my kids to do anything. You know, mm-hmm. if they're if they're excited about it. And they want to do it, uh, and that's kind of how my parents approach the game too. You know, they're they're very supportive. But and you know, when you needed that boost, they'd come over there and kick you in the ass. <laughs> and say, hey, you know, like nice. it's costing money and time, boy. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna be dedicated? You know, yeah. and uh, and yeah, we all, I think we all need that. Nice. That, uh, so. It's cool. Well, I was going to jump into broadcasting. Oh, I was going to ask a question. Oh, go quick. ahead. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Playing in Calgary, you played for Iron Mike. <laughs> How was that? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what That's what I thought. That's what I thought. It wasn't like playing in San Jose, let me tell you. Okay. okay. And and I didn't have a very good year up there either. And, and, uh, and it was a rough year uh, all around. Um, and then I, it topped off with, with a... a terrible injury at the end of the year so uh but on the other hand you know calgary is a great great city i like calgary a lot uh had some good friends there Mm -hmm. and and stuff so you know i made the best of it but as far as hockey it wasn't the best best year of my life and i think my wife had just told me she was pregnant too you know so i had a lot going on as well during the during the year year. so yeah (laughs) so i mean she didn't tell me we were we were obviously planning for it but uh she actually told me I had a tryout with the Rangers that mm-hmm. year. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, I went to Ranger camp and I literally landed in New York. And she told me that that we were going to have a, a baby, right? And I was like, "Oh, you couldn't have waited at yeah. least a week." Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, it was exciting. It w- it was pretty fantastic. So, nice. um, and then and then actually with the, but Daryl Sutter actually was the one that called me up and and uh, said, "Hey, I want you in Calgary," and mm-hmm. and. Uh, which was which was funny because I have some stories about Daryl when I when I he was my first coach right, right. in San Jose, yeah. and I think we all probably have Daryl stories right <laughs> yeah some probably are not made for podcasts <laughs> <laughs> some for others but uh, well it was kind of with 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 Daryl it was it was uh, it was a little bit tricky when I first came in because Dean Lombardi wanted me to come in uh, he was a you know. He had obviously drafted me yeah. with with Patty and 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 Scott Hannon, so we had a lot of we had a lot of top prospects and stuff. And and um, the reason that they drafted me was because I played Patrick Marlowe in the WHL Finals uh, that year, yeah. and my job was basically shut, shut down, down yeah. Patrick Marlowe, right? Nice. And and we ended up sweeping it. We had, we had such a good team, 
Um, and obviously that's kind of where the Sharks took notice of me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went on to the Memorial Cup and we didn't win it, but uh, had, <laughs> had some interesting games in, in Hall, <laughs> Quebec, uh, to say the least. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when I, so going back to Daryl, uh, <laughs> the first year that, De that Dean kept me, Dean kept me on the team, uh, they, he actually let Ronnie Sutter go, and oh, I basically wow. kind of took his job. So I think Daryl kind of looked down the bench and saw Ronnie Sutter every time he saw me. So uh, that was kind of a hard position as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially you want to come in on a good note. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of kind of maybe got behind the, the eight ball a little bit on that one. But, <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, over over the course of of my time with Daryl, I I want his kind of respect over it because I I know that I was kind of the player that he, that he likes, you yeah, know, like yeah. the scrappy kind of, right, you yeah, know. Totally. And and we built a relationship through that, and and uh, it ended up paying off. And and to this day, I, I sat on a flight with Daryl coming to L.A. one one time, and and uh, you know, just a great great man, mm -hmm. uh, you know. I had utmost respect for him. So nice. pretty cool. That's yeah. awesome. Good old journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, unless you, I don't, I'm not going to ask any more salty questions. No, about yeah, yeah. Calgary yeah. now. Okay, we're done. Yeah. yeah. Calgary. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> so uh, broadcasting was one of the right. things I wanted to ask you about. What? So you, you've jumped in. It's kind of funny because thinking about the things that you've done in in your life, you've played professional hockey. You you I mean the, the clothing thing, the right. uh, yeah. band that you had, the coding. Uh, now you're doing broadcasting. You're, you're like all over the map, and you're you're good at all of them apparently. <laughs> so it's great. So yeah, I, I would say par. No, so <laughs> par. I, I don't, I the most fact, of them. Okay, the fact yeah. that you're, you I mean, any of these things you're doing at a professional level, so means you you're get pretty paid, good. So you're so. professional. Exactly. Well, yeah, there you go. There. So yeah, thanks, uh, thanks. broadcasting yeah. with Dan. First of all, um, are you, how are you enjoying the broadcasting side of it now? Right, and then secondly, working with Dan. Right. Um, how how cool is that for you? Uh, it's very cool. And and let me just say this. There's been some train wrecks early. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but being on on the air with Dan, I mean, he can jump in and and save you, right? Yeah, and yeah. and I've been in deer caught in the headlights a couple times, like ah, and then he he comes in and saves me. But uh, you know, I've I've just touched on it a little bit. I've only done four games, yeah. uh, and and it's a work in progress, you know, as well, and and. Uh, I find myself, you know, having to watch a lot more hockey, which is good, you yeah. know, but, but it's, it's I, like you mentioned, I, I, I got a lot on the go, so, nice. so it's, it's hard to find time to do that, um, but uh, it, it's enjoyable for sure, and, and we'll see. I'm more of like a, just a temporary fill-in at the <laughs> moment, so. Do you think that we'll might see. change, though? You, you, you enjoy it enough to where you might pursue it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. We'll see. Uh, I'm just kind of taking it as it comes, you know, and... Sure. and and uh, but it is enjoyable. Like I get, I like w analyzing the games. I like mm -hmm. watching the plays and and stuff. And and I gotta actually stay sober when I go to the games <laughs> when, <laughs> when I'm doing that. So I gotta like nice. uh, really pay attention to, to what's going on. But uh, you know, Dan's super insightful, and and it's great just talking hockey with him. Someone mm -hmm. so passionate and and the stories that he has, you know, I can only imagine. He's got a whole book right, right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. If these walls could talk, right, yeah. right <laughs> now on right Amazon, yeah. uh, click the link below. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is it hard to work on radio versus TV because you kind of have to paint a picture to the audience well, versus... Well, they told me looking. I had a face for radio, so it's... it's, it's <laughs> well, that's great. what they tell us all the time, yeah. and we're still on YouTube. We're still on yeah. the air, yeah. Uh, it It's a little different. Um, Sometimes when I'm talking to Dan, he'll be looking over somewhere else. <laughs> it's like, so I had to kind of get used to that. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to talk. He can hear me. <laughs> yeah, he's a pro. Uh, because, you know, you got so many things going right. on and, and stuff. But uh, it, it's pretty fun. And, and you know, there's not... I, I don't really go in it with and put a ton of pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that probably the first couple, I put a lot more pressure on myself mm -hmm. than I, I should have. I should have been a little more, more relaxed and... But uh, it, it's great to watch watch the games, and you know, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see some great games coming up here in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I hope we get some some great games before the playoffs start. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> we'll get to that stuff too. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll talk some hockey. Yeah. 
So the Sharks are currently, as of today in recording, a six-game losing streak, which has everybody up in arms, <laughs> right? So um, when you were playing, right before Joe Thornton came to the team, you guys were in a 10-game losing streak, and that prompted the trade from Jumbo. Obviously, we can't do a trade now, but I, I feel like bringing Carlson back on is almost like a trade deadline of adding someone like Joe Thornton. But what right now in the locker room and, and the feel of the team like do you have any insight or anything that's like what are they doing right now what, what's different what can they change well I think you can see it in their game they're like you know it's there's there's that little bit of uncertainty kind of right now and I, I think a lot of it is stemming from obviously the, the injuries that they have mm -hmm. um, we'll see it's it's hard to come back and just jump in you know when when you've been out as as long as Carlson is you know has been and 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 the playoffs obviously is I mean I always tell people there's there's really three seasons in a mm -hmm. season there's exhibition where all the old guys don't care they just right. don't want to get hurt yeah. and then you know the the long grind of the season the playoffs is just another level where the refs really put the whistles away and and they let let a different it's a whole different style of hockey and mm -hmm. and Obviously, it's a lot more physical, and to kind of come in on that, it's you know, it's tricky. So um, I think losing Shimmick was was really hard on him, and 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 Shimmick, I thought, was a guy that was really starting to play with a lot more confidence. You could see in his game, he was starting to engage offensively at the right mm -hmm. spots. Um, he was getting more sound defensively, mm -hmm. and and he brought a brought an element of toughness uh, as well. Um, that that came natural, yeah. right, to him. Uh, so I think there that's a a really weak spot for them. And if you just kind of look at their their goals against lately, um, that's where it's got to come back. And 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 I think we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, like goaltending yeah. and kind of yeah. and and I'm not personally I don't see the goaltending as the issue. Um, I like Jones a lot and and, <laughs> and Dell and I think <laughs> I think they're they're world class goalies and and there's people are over that all over them a little bit because their numbers might not have been good but I mean I just watched the Detroit game and basically there was like five or six breakaways yeah, yeah, yeah. you you can't fault you can't fault a goalie for for right. breakdowns right. you know. And I think the Sharks have been playing very loose defensively throughout the season. So that's one area that they're really going to need to clean up. And they also are drastically, with with Pavelski out of the lineup, yeah. they're missing that leadership right now. And, and this is where I think Logan Couture really has to step up his game and, mm -hmm. and take on that responsibility from where Pavelski's left. This is a big... Uh, time for for Couture. I think he's he can really break out of his job. I'd like to see a little bit more from him right now. You know, Hurdle stepped up his game. We've all seen yeah. it this year. Um, and, and Meyer's been you know been playing great lately as well. You know, I'm Meyer. I almost look at Meyer like two years. You know where where Hurdle is now. You know, yeah. kind of like where he's gonna be. So. Um, That's an excellent point, actually, yeah. to raise. Yeah, because you know, it just he's a little bit behind hurdle, yeah. you know, and and the, I see these very similarities. Mm -hmm. One thing about the sh this Sharks team that I really like, uh, and that's just kind of watching them this year, is we all know Thornton loves to do the play where you know he gets behind the net and he fires it around the boards, and it's amazing to me how many of the players have adopted that play. Like I watch other pl yeah. teams do, yeah. and I mean they don't use that play a lot. But everyone on the Sharks now is kind of like the play, like plays like that. Mm -hmm. Burnsy's keepings yeah. at the blue line, yeah. like his soccer plays. I saw Pavelski doing that last like game before <laughs> he got hurt. Yeah, booted, and I mean it's such a great play, but it's something so small yeah. that I like this team where they actually want to go out there and learn new things and get and get better and force themselves. And that's like I was really seeing that throughout the season. Mm -hmm. uh, them really wanting to to push themselves to get better and 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 that's how you do it you you take things from other players that that are good and and you try to leave the bad things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right yeah P push those in the closet get rid of those <laughs> bad habits 
but uh, I do I really like that about the Sharks and and um, they've had such a great year you know it, it's it's sad that they got into a little bit of injury trouble here but uh, hey they're they're resilient mm-hmm. and and they are a deep team mm-hmm. uh, they just need other guys to step up and and there's some great opportunities for emerging leaders yeah. to to take the reins right here um, so challenge yourself mm-hmm. and uh, yeah hopefully yeah let's get some win. I mean it's it one it's, win again you know yeah, they're, they're yeah. right back at the right. same spot so yeah. um, they just need to get over that and they need to just you know tighten up their, their defensive play uh, you can't go and be successful letting in yeah. even the the six games they were winning yeah. they were still letting up a lot of goals they were just scoring a lot too mm-hmm. And now that they're that's kind of tapered off, uh, now they're losing those games. So right. that's the big difference. So yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> for, for me, it's it's validating hearing from someone who was a former professional right. hockey player mm. seeing it the same way. And that we've been defending Jones, it, yeah, and yeah. Dell all season. Oh, long. but his numbers suck. It's yeah. and I'm going okay. Here's the thing. Look at Dell's numbers. His numbers are terrible right. too, right? right. So yeah. is it the is it and Brody had said this in a different way, but yeah. my analogy was, if you have a lamp with two light bulbs, if both light bulbs go out at once, do you change both the light bulbs or do you check to see if the lamp's plugged in, right? So right. to me, it makes more sense yeah. that there's probably a bigger issue mm-hmm. causing you know, the light bulbs in this case, right. the, the goaltenders to be out uh, are not playing very well. And so hearing it from, yeah. from you saying that, somebody who's a, a former player and somebody who's been tasked with being a color uh, for, for broadcasting, yeah. I mean... Somebody who's got an eye for the game still. Right. Yeah, it's it, it is. It's validating for me. So thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, so no, and, and I, I'm a big Jones fan. I, okay. I, I really am. I think he's a, a world class yeah. goalie, and I, I, I don't, I don't like that. You know, he's getting this this flack. I, granted, yes, there's maybe some games th- that he could have been better and stuff mm-hmm. too. But I don't think that that's the sole problem here. I, I think that it's a team. Yeah problem mm-hmm. uh and it's a, it's their defensive play is at the moment is what you know is kind of my analysis on it but uh. so um if if it was jones fault right if if that was the case uh, and you've been in the, the you know professional locker room before my question is do the players i, I mean they may you know kind of talk with each other and say you need to be better we need to be better what do they ever go to the goaltender and say you need to be better or is he kind of off limits i kind of liken it to like a quarterback right. never telling his center he's done a bad job because he's protecting him the entire game right right uh, i can tell you i never went up to nabby okay. and told him that he sucked <laughs> <laughs> pick it up nabby yeah. you're, you're blowing it uh but again i was a fourth line player so no that hockey players are they hold each other incredibly accountable and if there is a need to do it, someone will say that. And, and you know, obviously they're not going to go over there and say, hey, yeah. you're, you're playing like, yeah. you know, <laughs> pick it up. Uh, well, they might. <laughs> <laughs> they might. Uh, or throw it a couple snide remarks. Uh, that might they wouldn't be, be doing it in a mean fashion. They're really just trying no. to, to. I mean, everyone's on the same page. You know, everyone wants to win. Right. Right. Yeah. And. If someone needs to be get picked up, they hockey players will pick them. You know, they'll they'll go over there and they'll they'll say, "Hey, let's go. Let's find out what's going on here, and, and I'll let me help you work on it and stuff." So, it's 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 not that I don't think anyone needs to go over there and tell them, like, "Hey, you played bad. Well, yeah, thanks." Yeah. You know, I think I think when you guys at this level, you know when you play good, and you know you know when you play bad. Um, but uh, it, it's. It's tough right now, and and these next couple games are are really huge to kind of get that confidence. But but I mean, it, like you look at Anaheim and, and last year, you know, they That's were on a, a yeah, tear about this last week. Right, yeah. they were on a tear at the end of the year, yeah. and and they got swept. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and you you've seen it the other way around too. Once the playoff hits, it's again, it's a different style of hockey, and yeah. and uh, do you think the Sharks will change their style? Not style, but tighten up that defense going in the playoffs? I think everyone does, yeah. whether they want to or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just more adrenaline. It's more, you know, and you... And and going back to, to a guy like Don Score, I was kind of talking a little bit, I think, with Dan on the radio about, about Don Score, Don Score and, and maybe how he's, uh, you know, not playing the way he is. Right. And, and once you... 
once I, I, one of his things that, that he's got kind of going on right now, I think, is is a lot of confidence and his mind. I think is second guessing little decisions. The game of hockey is so fast, mm -hmm. and I mean, in in one second you can go ten feet easily, right? Yeah. So you got to think if your mind is like a half a second off, that's five feet of right. of being in the wrong spot. And and there's hockey is obviously all about timing, and that is sometimes the difference whether you think it is or not you're for oh, half a second yeah. a millisecond whatever well that's five feet you know yeah. <laughs> like it's well maybe three or f three to four feet depends how, depends you are <laughs> that's hand in, yeah. it's hand and it's like half a foot <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> i hope he's listening yeah yeah right yeah <laughs> uh he will he'll give him the link right yeah <laughs> there you go i'll email email it to him uh Hannah, i said some really nice things about you <laughs> <laughs> so uh uh that's that's the difference but when you're in the playoffs you're again your mindset gets to that point and you just can you know you can't help it you you go a little harder you, everyone goes a little harder mm -hmm. and your game changes it's that the small little timing mm -hmm. everyone's game kind of shifts mm -hmm. a little bit and it becomes a whole different game and a whole different style so you mentioned that the refs they kind of swallow their whistles is what i say yeah. in the playoffs um yeah i feel like the sharks are a good five on five scoring team and their power plays kind of slumped a little bit so i i feel like that's going to bode well for the playoffs because they're not going to get as many chances on the power play well i think it'll really help out guys like hurdle and meyer uh i think their game kind of is is built for mm -hmm. that style a little bit um but I mean, Hurdle lately, his hands have been incredible <laughs> yeah. too. I mean, the confidence that he's got in yeah. his game right now—it's exciting to watch. Yeah. And and when he wants to take over physically, he can. I mean, it's just the league is such a different league from from back when I played. Um, and and when you are strong and and fast and can handle the puck like like Hurdle, that's such an advantage now mm -hmm. because the smaller guys just cannot physically stack up against you. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably draw more penalties that way too. Oh right? yeah, you know. But and again, you alluded to the refs, and I don't know. I don't understand why they do. I mean, just I think they just want the players to play in a way. Right? They want like it's it's more exciting, and they yeah. don't want to be the outcome of the that's game. Right. Yeah, that's what it is. So I think, why do you want to be the outcome right. of the game during the season? Yeah, because you <laughs> often are. You know, the first couple of games, yeah. I feel like they do make a decent amount of calls, and then games. Four, five, six, off. seven. Right, gone. and it, it also depends who you are, and I'm, yeah. and they're not going to call Joe Thornton the same way they call Mark Smith. Right, <laughs> and I mean it's like it, I've seen it my whole career. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, if you're a star, you can get away with a lot more. <laughs> hey, that's the name of the game, uh, but that's just the way the way it goes. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a different game, and 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 they put their whistles away, and and it's kind of sad because. In a way, it's it changes the entire way that the team teams gel that kind of yeah. way in that style, and then you see teams that have worked their whole season to kind of get like that. Now they got to kind of shift. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not really like it should be. But mind you, I, don't get me wrong. I enjoy <laughs> watching playoff hockey a lot more than I like oh, yeah. watching regular season yeah. because just because of that fact. Yeah. And, and I always love playing in the playoffs. I, it's, it's great. Nice. Yeah, Anything so. else you want to, to touch on for, for this, or do I get to move on to the, Go ahead, the fun one? I really want to do the fun one here. So, uh, story time. We've not done story time in a very long time, mostly because Aaron and I ran out of stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we. we <laughs> well, I told my story twice now. That's there you go. <laughs> one of my stories. So um, since we've got Mark here, yeah. um, I, I'm sure you've got some family friendly uh, stories <laughs> that you might be able to tell, mm -hmm. and if so, we'd love to hear them. I, I got a good one. Okay. I got a good one. Um, so during my time here we uh, it was matt bradley and i we originally we were like we want to surf right we're mm -hmm. in san jose and we had like off days quite a lot off days we weren't playing that much at that point in our careers <laughs> so we we're like well let's go to santa cruz and we'll we'll go over there and we'll we'll learn how to surf so we ended up uh getting boards and and we met some friends over there and and this one guy was a great surfer and and he always took us out and kind of showed us the ropes a little bit Made sure we didn't kill e kill our kill ourselves, but uh, <laughs> almost did multiple times. Uh, yeah, if there's if there's one sport that will humble you, it's surfing. It's and I was like, I'm, I'm a pretty good athlete, and I think I'll be able to pick it up. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, nope. no, you got to like read the water. What? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, 
but we got decent you know we got decent we did it we we were dedicated uh we got we took our beatings nice. uh but we we got decent and and like even now scott hannon serves quite a bit as well oh. but but during the time uh todd harvey and scott thornton decided that they were going to come come <laughs> surf with us right <laughs> And I think this was kind of getting towards Todd Harvey's end of his career where he was uh, maybe not as fit as he used to be. <laughs> yeah. So we got over to the, we got over there and we get in our wetsuits and, and uh, Harv was looking pretty skinny. <laughs> 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 and he, uh, we get on our boards and we paddle out and, and we're laughing and, and Harv is paddling. He's way out kind of front. And this girl kind of paddles up beside me and, and goes, Hey, is that is that Todd Harvey? <laughs> and I, I look and I'm like, no, that guy is way too fat to be a hockey player. <laughs> and she, she looks over and she's like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was pretty classic. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't let Harv. I didn't I didn't let him down for a while. I <laughs> gave gave Harv some some good rips on that one. That was, oh was pretty God. good jabs. That's, that's awesome. But uh, that was a pretty fun, <laughs> fun time. So we had fun time surfing and, and, and going over there and actually met, met, met a bunch of friends in Santa Cruz. So nice. like Santa Cruz a lot. It's, yeah. it's a good, good spot. But uh, don't get go de- don't get down there as much now living in San Francisco, this commute, this, yeah. you know, this killer. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, well, that's a good, good story for yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks for that. I really, really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no worries. Uh, again, our, our well is dry. So <laughs> yeah. we, yeah. we need we need more people on the show to actually tell stories. Yeah, so right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, if I, come, uh, if I come on here again, I'll have yeah. to like think of some some good stories for you, for you boys. <laughs> Welcome Perfect. back yeah. anytime. Absolutely. Yes. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. Very good. Um, what was after that now? When to, oh, we we're going to have them plug some... Fancy Camp. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Fancy Camp oh, coming up. Yeah, so uh, working with the Sharks alumni now uh, is super, super cool. Um, Doug uh, Dougie Murray is yeah. kind of heading it up. Uh, Scott Hannon's also heavily involved, and and uh, it's such a cool to be a part of because, you know, you get to do things, and, and the boys kind of come back into town, yeah. and, and, you know, you... you you jump right in where you left <laughs> off. It's, so it's pretty cool. But the one thing we have coming up is this uh, fantasy camp, and and uh, they're doing they're doing a little bit different style this year. Uh, they're bringing in a bunch of guys, and, and they're going to build teams. Mm-hmm. So these individual teams will uh, allow you to draft players. And and I know we got some like good names coming back in for this. <laughs> quite like I think there's like. 12 or 14 guys that are coming back. So nice. I, Scotty Thorne, I, I, you said uh, Freddie was on there. Freddie, I, I can't remember. I can't remember, remember either, you know, but, yeah. but, and then a bunch of the local guys here, yeah, you know, yeah. will be playing as well. Uh, so it, it's it's going to be pretty cool. And uh, that is on April 12th to 14th. So you can go on the Sharks Alumni Foundation website. Yeah, we'll put it website. Down yeah. below here. Uh, go check. Go. <laughs> yeah, go check that. Up. Sign up a team. You can bring yeah. a whole team if you want. Um, I think team. It's like three on three style. I think mm, is what nice. they're doing. Uh, there'll be like a hot stove night where you can like hang out, party with the, with all the guys, and get some be fun. some good yeah. stories. Yeah. And you guys should probably probably maybe, come by there, and we'll be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's set set things up. So. <laughs> Yeah, so it should be good. So that's uh, definitely something. You probably need somebody who's got an in on that whole thing, though. So I don't know who though. Hmm. <laughs> We'll see if we can, we can find make a, some calls. See right. if we can find yeah, a contact yeah, yeah, for that. Yeah. We'll one. call yeah. Scotty, right? Yeah, we'll get we'll get Scotty on board. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Um, yeah, that's cool. Then you also, I know we talked about it earlier, but the other thing was the the clothing line we wanted. To, right? Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. wife's clothes. Yeah, yeah, so she's uh, she's a do, doing uh, like awesome women wear women's mm-hmm. wear. Ilaclothing dot com is is her website. A Y L A. Yeah, yeah. Ila Clothing and down. and. Uh, She's just getting ready to uh, release her uh, spring summer collection. So very cool, uh, cool for the next year. So yeah, it's it's great. She's she's she loves doing, it. That loves it. Yeah, yeah, it's like really high end women's yeah. wear. It's pretty pretty amazing and stuff. If it, if she's it so talented. Directs you to a website that's in Cabo. It's, right. It is the, the right, right website. Well, okay. yeah. right. No, no, that's that's <laughs> yeah. a different one. That's our our store. We still have our store. Oh, in okay, Cabo. okay. All right. yeah, Don't go to that website. Yeah, we right, right. That one hasn't been upkeep. But if you're in Cabo, yes. yeah. you can go. Isla Isla Silver, uh, and you can check it out nice. on Facebook and, and Instagram, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, okay. So, uh, if you're, and that's sil- we're strictly silver and, and yeah. jewelry down there, but yeah. like some really amazing stuff. So if you're in Cabo, definitely, nice. definitely. My sister runs that store with oh, us cool. now too. She lives down there full time. Yeah. 
She's got a grocery business as well, Prickly Pear Cabo. Oh, wow. So if you go there, yeah, you can actually uh, go online, order your groceries in online, and, and they deliver it that's right perfect. to your door. So, yeah, that's it's great. It's pretty cool. Wow. Pretty cool We've spot. got a lot of people that go down to Cabo on yeah. vacation, so that's good. Yeah. 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 There you go. Awesome. Cool. Anything else, as long as we have him here? Because he's still here. Man. He hasn't left yet. <laughs> Man, I know. Amazingly. This is crazy. Uh, I can't think of anything on no, top of my head. Okay, yeah. so uh, we've de- first of all, um, the what was this border? I don't know the picture in the back here, the Fin Factor picture. We've got you know Dan Rusinowski, we've got uh, Randy Hahn, amongst other folks on here, and we will get uh, Mark to sign uh, our little picture frame to here, nice. which would be great. Uh, so add another signature to the, also the, sign the plaque, the photo. if you will, and we'll put yes. the photo up on the set somewhere. <laughs> yeah. we'll there you go. Oh, yeah. We'll probably reluctantly sign the photo, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, but something we've been doing with some of our guests. Um, we have this bottle of wine that we uh, nice. put our little Fin Factor logo on, and uh, Dan Rusnowski uh, knew of this this wine here. He says it's a very good one. Awesome! So, there you go. Thank you very much, boys. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> thank that. Thank you for coming. Appreciate well, the thank time. Thank you. Uh, it was awesome, and and I had a really good time. And and uh, yeah, hopefully we can do this again. And yeah, I would and, love uh, to. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'll have to call up some of the other boys and, and get them on here too. Yeah, that would be and, uh, go very well some. received. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice to have an in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that does it for episode number forty-three. Our interview with Mark Smith. That was awesome. I really yeah. enjoyed it. So, um, gosh, is there anything you want to throw at the end here? Are we good? Uh, you can buy our swag on our. There you go. Our website. Put that down here. So good at this. And <laughs> swag. Yeah. Buy it. T-shirts, it hats, now. stickers, and that's it for now. Well, yeah. Yeah. So maybe more and later on. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. And again, uh, Facebook and Twitter at the Fin Factor. Instagram at Fin Factor. And we're on uh, Discord, Reddit as well. So that does it for episode 43. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.